Remotely accessing a Synology NAS is the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, and in my opinion, the most misunderstood. There are many people who feel like purchasing a NAS and keeping it locked down is a complete waste of money, while others purchase a NAS and completely lock it down from any remote access whatsoever out of fear of it being hacked. The truth, as usual, lies somewhere in the middle, but understanding your options and making an informed decision on which option is best for you is the most important step. So the question is, what are some of the ways that a Synology NAS can be accessed remotely and which option will keep your NAS secure while offering a level of flexibility that makes accessing it easy? The first option we're gonna explore is self-hosted VPNs and why the best place to host it is probably not on your Synology NAS. First, a self-hosted VPN is exactly what it sounds like. OpenVPN or WireGuard hosted on a local device that will act as the VPN server. The local device can be your Synology NAS if you wanna use OpenVPN, but speaking honestly, I find it better to offload this if you can to a separate device. If your router supports a VPN server, that's the best place to run it in my opinion. If it doesn't and you have a Linux server or a Raspberry Pi, I'd suggest looking into WireGuard. It's easy to configure as soon as you understand how the keys work and can be even more simple if you use the WireGuard Easy Docker container, but it has a massive benefit over OpenVPN from a usage perspective. If you're using iOS or a macOS device, you can completely automate the connection to the VPN server by connecting or disconnecting from the VPN based on the network you're currently on. This means that when you leave your house, you can automatically connect to the VPN server and access to your NAS and local devices will persist without you actually doing anything. It's seamless. When you get back home and connect to your Wi-Fi, it will automatically disconnect from the VPN server. So the entire process is completely automated. If you're using Windows or Android, as of right now, that functionality doesn't exist. WireGuard has some other benefits over OpenVPN, like a smaller code base and generally faster performance, but both options are great. So if you're using OpenVPN and you're happy with it, don't feel obligated to switch. The biggest downside of VPN servers is accessibility. Now, like I said, WireGuard eases the burden of constantly connecting and disconnecting from the VPN on Apple devices, but there's more to accessibility, so let's talk about that for a second. In order to access your NAS or local devices, you have to ensure that you're connected to the VPN. When you are, you'll function as you normally do when you're at home. So if you have a mapped network drive, it will work as soon as you connect to the VPN, no matter where you are. Think of the VPN as a secure tunnel from your location back to your local network. When you connect to it, you're not connecting directly to the NAS, you're connecting to the VPN server, which will then allow you to access the NAS and any other devices permitted. With a self-hosted VPN, you're in control of everything. So it's generally known as the most private, secure option. But remember, you're responsible for securing it. Also, you must be able to port forward on your router for a self-hosted VPN server to work properly. So if you're behind a carrier grade NAT, which basically means that your ISP hands you a private IP address instead of a public IP address, you cannot use this option but you can use a zero configuration VPN like Tailscale. Tailscale is built on top of the WireGuard VPN protocol and simplifies the process of managing and implementing a VPN server. It's a point-to-point -point VPN, which basically means that devices can connect directly to each other as opposed to a self-hosted VPN server where everything is routed through the VPN server. Telescale requires no port forwarding, has an extremely simple setup process, performs extremely well, though it won't be as fast as a self-hosted WireGuard VPN and can be set up in roughly five minutes. So why wouldn't you use it? There are reasons. Think of Tailscale like the broker for your VPN. There's still a WireGuard VPN behind the scenes, but they're the ones configuring everything. Some people don't like this from a privacy perspective, but there's also the fact that you're relying on Tailscale servers to stay online in order for your VPN server to stay online. And on top of that, that Tailscale is only free for up to five users, and you can see how it won't be the best option for everyone. Now, there are ways to make it more private, like using Headscale, which is basically the self-hosted version of Tailscale, but it's a fairly involved setup process and won't be as simple as configuring Tailscale on your Synology NAS. There are other zero config VPNs, but I think that Tailscale is known with Synology users due to its simple package setup. From a usage and accessibility standpoint, basically all the downsides of a self-hosted VPN server are true here as well, 
with the benefit over self-hosted VPNs being an easier setup process and no port forwarding. Next up is Synology Quick Connect, which is probably the most widely used remote access option for general users. A lot of the clients that I've worked with use Synology Quick Connect, and the benefit to it is that it just works. Now, Synology Quick Connect behind the scenes is actually fairly complicated, but I'll break it down as simply as I can. When you connect to your NAS through Quick Connect, it will attempt to access the device through the local network. If the connection succeeds, everything will stay local to provide you with the best overall performance. If the LAN isn't available, it will attempt to connect via the WAN, which can be done if the DSM port is forwarded, which you shouldn't do, but that's how it works. If a LAN or WAN connection cannot be made, it will attempt to use a feature called hole punching, which will, in essence, attempt to connect the client to the NAS using a random external port. This is done for performance with the goal of providing DDNS-like performance, but using Quick Connect. If the two options above don't work, Synology will use its relay service, which will route all traffic through a relay server with the downside being performance. If you're using Synology's relay server, your performance will be poor. So with all of this said, accessibility is high. You can connect to your NAS anywhere and it will attempt to provide you with the best overall option for performance. The downside is that you can only access the NAS, some Synology applications, and the data on the NAS. So mapped network drives won't work and services like Plex won't work. Another downside is that Synology manages everything. And while we haven't had any major issues that I know of in terms of the security of Quick Connect, it's still completely out of your hands. So if you want something that's in your control, you can look at a reverse proxy. A reverse proxy is a great option in extremely specific scenarios. A reverse proxy will allow you to expose one port, generally 443, and based on the domain name, route traffic to the internal server. This means you can expose multiple web services through one individual port and have some sort of security through obscurity as you must know the exact domain name to access the service. Reverse proxies can be limited with access control profiles, configured directly on your Synology NAS, and will provide great overall performance and accessibility. The downside is that you're opening the NAS to the external world, which means that you need to pair Synology's firewall with access control profiles to limit access as best as you can. Speaking honestly, I feel like this is a well-known but lesser used option and one that makes sense in specific scenarios, but if what you're attempting to connect to can be accessed by a VPN with a limited number of users, that will almost always be the better option. A reverse proxy is just a better version of DDNS, which is generally known as being the worst overall option to access your Synology NAS. DDNS allows you to create a domain name that will automatically track your external IP address. You would then port forward a service and use the DDNS hostname plus the port to access whatever service you forwarded. This means for every service you'd like to access, a different port would have to be forwarded. I exposed an NAS using DDNS for three months and created a video on it to show you what happened and ultimately why you shouldn't use it. But a lot of the hate on DDNS comes from the fact that it's almost never configured the way it should be, at least from a security perspective. To give you an example, if you had two Synology NAS devices at separate locations, both with static external IP addresses, and you were backing up one Synology NAS to the other using Hyper Backup, you technically can port forward the Hyper Backup Vault port, limit access using Synology's firewall to that one external IP address, and one network in the world would be able to access it on that specific port. I don't think many would say that that's necessarily insecure, but the fear of DDNS generally comes from people blindly port forwarding the DSM port so that they can access their NAS remotely without actually understanding what they're doing. Now, to be entirely clear here, there's probably a 99 plus percent chance that you shouldn't be using DDNS to access your NAS remotely, but it technically is an option that in extremely, extremely specific circumstances can make sense. Before you go down this path, make sure you're doing it for one of those reasons. If you want the flexibility of a reverse proxy or DDNS with some added security controls, you might actually benefit from a zero trust network like Cloudflare Tunnels or Twingate. Now these aren't the only zero trust options out there, but I picked them because they function extremely differently. Twingate functions by forcing you to log in with a Twingate account where that authentication will then permit you access to the services configured. Cloudflare tunnels are different in that they actually allow full access globally by default and can have security features enabled to then limit that access down. Zero trust networks are nice because you can pick specific devices on specific ports 
and only allow access that way. With the downside of trusting a third party with basically unlimited access to your local network. Some people describe zero trust networks as a man in the middle, which probably isn't the worst way to describe them, but it's not the most flattering either. Now we went over a lot here and there are options that I'm sure I missed, but I think that these are the bulk of the remote options most people will use. I wanna provide some sort of recap to help you decide which option is best for you. If your goal is security, almost always, you should be using a VPN. Whether it's self-hosted or a zero config VPN like Tailscale, you're using a secure VPN tunnel to access your NAS and any other local services you'd like to access. The downside, as mentioned, is accessibility. But the main goal here is security and that's what a VPN provides. When looking at pure ease of use, Quick Connect is by far and away the easiest way to access a Synology NAS remotely. The downside is that the performance can be limited and you don't control anything. But if you edit the permissions for Quick Connect, it can start to make a lot of sense in certain scenarios. Next would be DDNS and a reverse proxy. If you wanna use DDNS, I'd suggest using a reverse proxy. In very specific scenarios like we discussed earlier, DDNS can make sense, but a reverse proxy will do everything that DDNS will do with the benefit of requiring the domain name to access the service. Plus, if the only thing holding you back from using a reverse proxy is the domain name, you can get a free DDNS host name from Synology and use subdomains and the reverse proxy server that way. Just a better way of handling it in my opinion. Finally, if you wanna use a zero trust network, you're probably gonna know it. I don't think that this is the most popular option, though Cloudflare made it more popular, but if you want the added accessibility with some security controls in front of it, this can make a lot of sense. Some people would say this is their favorite way of remotely accessing Synology NAS, and I think in some scenarios it makes a lot of sense. But as with everything, understand your needs before jumping to one option. Hopefully this all helped. Let me know your favorite option in the comments. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.